This is Brent of the Brookbush Institute, and in this video, we're bringing you the ultimate glute bridge, or should I say the evidence-based glute bridge. That is, all of the modifications we've made to this glute bridge exercise to maximize the amount of glute max recruitment. I'm going to bring my friend Melissa out. She's going to help me demonstrate this exercise. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is in research we've seen that hip abduction, specifically isometric hip abduction against resistance, seems to increase glute max recruitment while decreasing the relative recruitment of synergists, the biceps femoris and the erector spinae. So I have this nice, super thick monster band for you to put above your knees to resist hip abduction. She's really, really strong. So of course we're gonna torture her as much as possible. Now, we also need to consider that the glute max is primarily type 1 muscle fiber. In fact, it's almost 70% type 1 muscle fiber. To me, that means fatigue resistant. These muscle fibers are good in endurance, which means from a stimulus standpoint, how we're going to um, try to get an adaptation from these fibers, we need to stay in our endurance acute variables. That's 12 to 20 repetitions slow tempos, 4-2-1 or 3-2-1, to maximize time under tension. Now since I'm maximizing time under tension, my load is gonna decrease a little bit, which means I can up the stability component of the exercise and further increase motor unit recruitment. So out comes the stability ball. You can go ahead and take a seat on the stability ball. Now the last thing we want to consider is the fact that the glute max is the largest muscle on the human body. That's not just some bodies, that's everybody's. The glute max is a super important muscle. Hip extension is a very important joint action when it comes to function, daily living. Those activities like walking, standing, sitting, stairs, and all sports. Glute max is super important, right? So we have this super strong muscle that is probably gonna need significant load to fail within 12 to 20 reps. The idea that just a floor bridge to 50 reps is going to be sufficient to create an overload on this muscle is actually not thinking far enough ahead in the future. When we look at how much the glute max has to work just to get somebody upstairs, which is essentially a single leg quarter squat. Doing a portion of our body weight from the floor, not good enough. So, Melissa, I got this 80 for you. Now, you guys gotta plan ahead a little bit on this, cause otherwise this becomes a Three Stooges parody. She's gonna deadlift this weight with great form. All right, so I've already taught her how to deadlift well. Melissa deadlifts very well, in fact. But to keep that ball from rolling away while she picks this weight up, just use your hand towel. Go ahead and stand up. Throw it behind your stability ball, right? That way she can stand up, the ball doesn't roll away, she can sit down, and we don't have any accidents. We also don't have a situation where every time she picks up the dumbbell, the ball rolls away, and she has to put down the dumbbell and go get the ball. All right, now you can go ahead and, and roll out. Now remember I said slow tempo, so I want you to hold at the top for two, and we're gonna go down for four seconds. Down, two, three, four, and up. Now a couple things as she finishes this wonderful set of 20 repetitions, you'll notice that her feet are a little wider than hip width. I have seen some studies that show really, really wide hip angles. I've even seen some, I saw one study where they, they were like on the outsides of their feet and their, their legs were turned out. The one thing you have to think about is in all of those studies, adductor magnus activity was not recorded. And your adductor magnus has a propensity to become very overactive, contribute to hip pathology, as well as sacroiliac joint pathology. And despite the fact that the glute max recruitment might have increased with these wide hip angles, so did adductor magnus activity, if I had to take a guess. Now we need further research to prove that, but from our perspective at the Brook Bush Institute, we're gonna go slightly wider to hip width, use the band to increase hip abduction force, and then beyond that, leave it at a fairly normal angle. 
something that's a little closer to how we would see in function, like when you squat or when you run or when you jump. The other thing worth noting here, guys, is Melissa is very comfortable with this weight on the top of her thighs, just below her ASIS, and she's using her hand to keep the weight there. Don't take your hands off the weight. If this wasn't comfortable for you, you could potentially use like a bath towel. Notice this is several layers thick, or you could use an Eric's pad, or you could even use like a, a rolled up yoga mat to try to soften any pointy edges digging into your lap. My point is to make her glutes very uncomfortable, not to have her thighs very uncomfortable. Now, last thing I wanna talk about, I gotta give a shout out to Brett Contreras for making loads like this far more popular, but let's talk about the differences between doing hip thrusts with really large amount of weight and low rep ranges versus what we're showing you, which is a high rep range glute bridge that would be used more for core activity. I think when, I've, when I spoke to Brett Contreras, he talked about there being more motor unit recruitment with more load, regardless of what the muscle fiber type of the glute max is. I agree, more load, chances are you're gonna get more motor unit recruitment, but what is your end goal? What is your use of that exercise? If you're doing hip thrusts, hip thrusts as part of your hypertrophy resistance training portion of your program, I would say go with the Brett Contreras style, stable, very heavy hip thrust activity. We tend to use bridges as a core exercise. So we're almost thinking more towards our movement prep. This is coming right after our isolated activation exercises. We're using this more as a way of integrating the glute max into a multi-joint movement pattern. And then when we get into resistance training, we're usually thinking more on the performance side of things and more of like our triple extension movement patterns like squats, deadlifts, lunges, step-ups. We don't see as many hypertrophy athletes at the Brook Bush Institute as maybe Brett does. So there's an, attend there's an audience thing there, there's a use thing there. I'm not saying one is right and one is wrong. In fact, I think you guys should try both. I think you guys should try this as part of your core activity. I think there's more than a few tips here of using the stability ball to do your hip thrusts, using the band to resist hip abduction, starting to put some weight on this activity that you probably could do way too many reps of before. If you're not failing at 20 reps, it's not heavy enough. And once you get down glute bridges as a core activity, more on the endurance side with lower weights and an unstable environment, well good, now you're nice and stable and ready to start thinking about, well, maybe I could get a little more hypertrophy in my glute max using something like a hip thrust as part of my resistance training program after I've done my movement prep. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. The evidence-based or ultimate glute bridge, stability ball, resisted abduction, hip thrust with a significant amount of load. I look forward to seeing your questions. I wanna see who can do a 20 rep set with the heaviest dumbbell in their gym. That a good challenge? Ow. That's a good challenge. I think that's a good challenge. I can do 130 for 20 reps, 130 pound dumbbell. Is that good? I think that's good. That's an 80 pound dumbbell, guys, just in case. So all you guys out there who are not putting up 80 pounds, she's got 80 pounds for 20 reps. I'll talk to you guys soon.